Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Grand Prix. Look what Hamilton is doing. Tires barely holding on. He rockets into the iconic Eau Rouge corner. Oh no, the rear end swings out. Ah, Arnold, it's you again, you fool. The only thing you've got in common with Formula One is Blue Flag Bum. Phew, we need to air this place out. Let me tell you what mm. real Formula One is all about. During races, drivers face insane G-forces, up to 30 G. That's 30 uh. times your body weight. Oh, Arnie, is that your new crush? For Max Verstappen, that's like carrying 2,100 kilograms, about three cows stacked on it. Couldn't handle the weight of that relationship. Sorry, sweetheart, nothing personal. Let's keep going. One secret to a car's agility, the tires. No standard tread, but soft and sticky, like chewing gum. They grip the track like gum sticks to hair, but it's a pricey thrill. Teams swap tires multiple times a race, burning through $20,000 per race weekend. You just burn through your kid's college fun, but the cost of racing isn't just money. Sometimes it's lives. The legendary Nürburgring track has claimed around 200 drivers. Thankfully, techs made things safer. Protective suits, advanced car safety systems. Now, team budgets take the hit, not the drivers. A single car? About $20 million. That's $20 million more than you've got. Did you know a Formula One car could drive on the ceiling? It's all thanks to downforce, strong enough to rip manhole covers off the street. So that's why on street circuits like Monaco, they weld the manhole cover shut. Sorry guys, no pizza tonight. Arnie, what a disgusting stench. And the car's exhaust isn't much better. Though, Formula One doesn't trash the planet as bad as you'd think. Across a whole season, every race and every team burns less fuel than one transatlantic flight. You think you're ready? Seriously, you skimmed some theory and now you're a racer. What an idiot. And today, he's made a bet with Elon Musk that he can outrun a Tesla in his regular old internal combustion engine car. Don't worry, Elon is unlikely to reach the finish line. After all, no one took into account that while the race was taking place, Snot and Gob would be arranging a barbecue for themselves. It seems that even the normal temperature of the sun isn't enough to grill their infamous pan-galactic gargle bangers. Ah, now that's much better. Oops. Solar flares like these are not good because they usually disable all the power plants and electrical appliances on the Earth. This will definitely negatively affect all vital processes on the planet, particularly in medicine, or such absolutely crucial needs like social networks, likes, and reposts. Only Satanists won't be affected. It might even benefit them. And here's our ultra-fast turtle. Like everything electric, Elon's car broke down. The important thing here is not to celebrate ahead of time. He might be dumb, but Arnold for sure knows how to wink perfectly. Too bad he's intellectually challenged. The battery has died. Now, these guys need somehow get out of the desert. It's good that Elon has already come up with something. And it's even better that his trunk has a, a bucket, a mini rocket, and groceries. Ooh, potatoes are a great idea. After all, one potato can stably deliver 0.5 volts of voltage. It will take about 13 volts to start Arnold's combustion engine car. So, with 26 potatoes, a zinc nail, and copper wire, we should have enough to start the car. Darn it. The crank current is too low. To start the engine, you need hundreds of thousands of potato batteries. I'd advise you to hurry up. The sun is setting and the desert nights here get quite cold. Wow, guys, great outfit. I hope we can do without the famous blue crystal here today. Oh, wait, I know what you're trying to do. If we take zinc bowls, screws, coins, sponges, potassium oxide, copper, brake pads, and we mix them together and connect them to the car, then we'll have a regular battery charge. The guys did everything right. It's a shame that there still isn't enough power to drive. Hurry up, the clock is ticking. Arnold, stop digging around there. 
Wait, show me what you found. A magnet! This is exactly what we need, Arnold. Hey, Elon, this isn't the best time for that. Ah, it's for a common cause. In 1831, Faraday conducted a similar experiment for the first time. For this, we need a coil, copper wire, and a magnet. We insert the magnet in a coil wound with copper. We move the magnet inside, and in each coil of copper, a voltage of 0.01 volts is generated. But due to the large number of turns, everything is working just fine. Let's see how it works for the guys. Wow! Just be careful with your finger! Well, at least we survived. And the finger will grow back. Arnold, leave the Tesla here. And now the party continues. Uh-oh. See you in the next episode! Looks like they're up to something again. Hey, are you guys gonna try and make someone immortal? Whoa, who is this? I'm guessing this guy has no idea what loneliness is. I think we found just the guy you're looking for. I can't wait to find out how you're gonna make him immortal. Transplanting Voorhees DNA into the handsome dude is a great idea. From a biological standpoint, you can make a person immortal. To achieve this, you simply need to remove from the DNA the propensity to age and suffer from disease. But today, Snot and Gob are trying to figure out how can you kill something that's immortal. The first test is teleportation. To move an object from point A to point B, you need to move all the atoms and neural connections exactly as they were in the original. After that, the original has to be destroyed, with only the perfect copy remaining. Therefore, theoretically, teleportation kills both a mortal and an immortal. Hmm, I was expecting a slightly different result, but it's much too early to give up. Here we have an alkaline bath that can dissolve any living creature. It's a shame these aliens didn't watch Breaking Bad, because after all, then they know that alkali will dissolve a bathtub faster than a human body. I think the next test is gonna kill you for sure, handsome dude. It's gonna start by destroying your brain. No one on this planet can endure something like this for more than a day. You're still alive! Okay. <laughs> Lucky for us, Snot and Gob just so happened to steal this huge meat grinder yesterday. <coughs> what are we waiting for? The meat grinder ain't gonna turn itself on. He seems to have lost his memory. More precisely, all his neural connections have been destroyed, and his mind is like a pure white sheet. In some way, we've killed him. And what shall we do with that now? I don't know, but it'll be something interesting. Uh... Wait a minute. Why would you want to kill an immortal? Uh... Ah, you want to get rid of me and take over my show. Damn, he's on to us. Time to slip away. It's okay, we'll create our own show, and then we're going to be great. Get out. I'm sorry, dude, I didn't even ask your name. Oh, Arnold, nice to meet you. Hey, when did you manage to get to the seaside? So, what's the whole beach set for anyway? Ah, is this to get Bertha's attention? Wow, it actually worked! She invited you to visit her! But, hey buddy, do you have enough money for a ticket? I have an idea. You can fly to Bertha in extra super duper economy class. And instead of the usual tablet and pillow, you're gonna need food, water, and a porta potty. Don't worry, Arnold. You're not the first one to travel like this. 
Reginald Reg Spears, without any money, got all the way to another continent in just three days. Nowadays, warehouses are like cities with their own laws and regulations. The probability of losing a package is reduced to a minimum. Robots work on the conveyors by reading special barcodes. This reduces the risk of human error. In 2019, China set a world delivery record with 345 million packages delivered in just one day. The worst thing that can happen to a package is that it can get detained in a port at customs. I agree, for the person inside, this ain't like staying at the Ritz. Finding yourself in a confined space under the blazing hot sun is a difficult task to endure. Arnold, hang on, little buddy. It's just a little longer now. To be precise, 23 days, 17 hours, and 45 minutes. And a person is not the most amazing thing ever delivered in a package. An entire bank was transported this way. It was dismantled and sent to another city. Welcome to Australia, Arnold. One of the benefits of traveling by package is courier delivery right to the final destination point. Bertha will be here any minute. Wow, what a babe. Arnold, are you ready? Good look for you, Arnold. She definitely won't forget you like that. Stop watching Netflix and stop texting Susie. She's not going to answer you anyway. Come on. No way. Are you finally going to meet her? Ha <laughs> ha, what a maroon. You're seriously depressed, buddy. The World Health Organization estimates that depression affects 300 million people worldwide. That's about 4% of the global population. Depression occurs due to a deficit of neurotransmitters in the brain, serotonin, norepinephrine, and dopamine. Without these natural chemicals, favorite activities stop being pleasurable and colors turn gray. And all of this can end very tragically. So just don't do something stupid, Arnie. Arnold, you have millions of fans on YouTube. Why do you need all this? Come to me, buddy. I'll give you a big hug. Depression isn't just a change in mood. It's a real illness. To treat it, you most definitely need to consult a doctor, preferably a psychiatrist. Antidepressants can help you, but be careful. Some are addictive. Start going to the gym. Believe it or not, exercise is one of the best ways to reduce symptoms of depression. And change your diet. Eat more dark chocolate, seafood, nuts, and fruits. Meet with your friends. You can get a pet and take it for walks in the park. Now that everything's stabilized in your nervous system and your hormones of happiness have returned to normal levels, the world sparkles with new colors. And now that you're in better physical shape, girls have even started checking you out, buddy. Is that Susie? She's ready to meet you. Quick, answer her. And tell her you're just standing here like an ignoramus. Oh, no. Not again. Please help my poor buddy Arnold. You can give him some likes. For Arnie, it's the best cure for what ails him. I, I, I can't watch this. I'm out. What's up? Yeah. Looks like everything's getting weird and buggy. <laughs> Distinguishing virtual reality from reality is becoming more and more difficult every day. Ooh, deja vu. Calm down, you paranoid pinhead. Stray animals often break into houses to find food. Or maybe the world around you is a simulation. Relax, buddy, it's an optical illusion. If you change your viewing angle, everything falls into place. But after all, truth be told, everything you see really is just a figment of your brain's imagination. Light entering your retina is converted into an impulse that transmits information to the visual image processing system. From there, the signal goes to your brain and you see what you see. And when, woo, woo, what a beauty, hmm. Another glitch or a consequence of popular trends in mass markets? Such synchronicity can make you think you're losing your mind. Yes, Arnold, you're right. This definitely needs to be recorded. But take your phone out of your pocket slowly and carefully, buddy. Or the police might think that you're reaching for a weapon. This is how the illusion works. The reticular formation in your brainstem becomes excited. Hey, where are you going, you coward? Arnold! Who's this? No, 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 don't even think about it. This is not the Matrix. 
That's a bad idea, Arnold. Almost as bad as making a sequel to the legendary trilogy. Meet Arnold is a hallucination, and the effects are now 300 times stronger. And Arnold's brain turns into goo. In fact, just like him, this requires serious medical intervention. What the heck? Am I, am I glitching now, too? How can you tell what's real and what isn't? Write in the comments about your glitches. And I think I need to go lie down for a little while.